Alright guys, Dad took the kids for a walk, so now we get to make a video. We are going to learn how I connect my squares together. We have lots of squares that are this size, 10 window, 20 window, 40 window. If you're following along with my Father's Day crochet along right now, it's scarves, but the scarves get joined together. It's the same process. It doesn't matter what size or shape you're joining. This is how I prefer to join. There's other ways to join. Definitely always do what you prefer. I also am going to use red to join just so you can see it better. But if I was not necessarily making a video, I'd probably use white because my outside is white. The join would be white. That's how I would prefer to do it. Red is probably not going to look too bad. And I'm not really sure what I'll do with this square after. Maybe make a pillow, join it to other squares. Not sure. I don't really like these super long intros where it's just boring to watch. But uh, unfortunately, it was kind of necessary this time because there's nothing to see until we get to the doing. So here is my layout. This is what I want my finish to look like. So I'm just going to pick these up, put the two wrong sides together. And what I'm going to do with my yarn is I'm going to make a slip knot. I don't know. There's other ways to make slip knots. This is how I do my one. So I'm going to make the slip knot, but then I'm going to come back out. I'm going to find that gap. Now this is this is where I'm starting. It's right at the bottom. Oh, you can't see that on the video. I'll move it up. This is where I'm starting at the bottom. And I'm just going to go up here and I'm not going to stop and cut and I'm going to keep going up. So, pick these ones up. My face no. Nope, there we go. Pick these ones up so that they're together. Find the two chain gap. And then grab that little slip knot, pull it through. Ta da! We are now stuck together. Now, I do a single crochet in the back loop only. Normally, you would be going under two. Well, let's see if it'll focus on those. Those two, that's where you normally crochet. Because I want it to lay differently, I'm just going to go in the back loop only. And because this one is the wrong side, the back loop is actually the one closest to you. Okay. So there we go. I'm going to go in, single crochet. And then we go to the next one, in the back, in the back, which is actually closest to you, single crochet, back loop. That's also the back loop, even though it's closest to you. It's the loops that are closest to each other. Oh, we did something funky there. My yarn is splitting. Try again. There we go. So we're going to do that all the way across. Just a single crochet. I've seen other people do slip knots. I've seen other people do all sorts of fancy things, but I. I don't think it really matters. As long as you're consistent, you can do whatever you like. Maybe you get bored with this, you want to try learning something new, right? This is just what I found to be simple and nice enough. I don't know, it's not like super fancy, but it does make a line and it does keep things together. And it also uses my crochet hook instead of a sewing needle because I really don't enjoy hand sewing. There's just Something about crocheting that I enjoy <laughs> much more than getting that little darning needle out, weaving my tails in. But you could also literally sew them together. So if we were counting, you would notice that we are nearing the end. You could also just look, but keep going all the way across. I think it keeps wanting to zoom or focus on the stuff in the background. Sorry, I don't know how to fix that. Get my hands in the right spot, I guess. Okay, so we're getting close. This is going to be my... This is the last stitch 
There we go. And then I'm going to go into that gap again. Okay. So we've got in the gap, in all the stitches, and in the gap. And it's there. Makes a nice line. We want to keep going and join these ones. So I just, I just literally keep going. I'm going to go into that gap, into that gap. I think this yarn needs to be on the back. Okay, so this is how I have it. Yarn's at the tail is at the back. We're in the gaps. We're going to just pull it nice and tight and do a single crochet. Then we're going to go back to those back loops only. And I hope, I know this is kind of boring to watch. I don't think it's a video I would enjoy watching because, hmm, I guess I get impatient. I fast forward through a lot of videos. But I know I have heard from enough of you that you like to see every single step. So I'm going to put up the whole video even though to me it is a bit boring. And it just, it, it takes this long to do it anyways. So shortening the video doesn't really benefit anyone. You can fast forward if you want to, and if you don't want to, it's there. So, oops, see my yarn is splitting again. That is what happens when you use cheap yarn, probably, right? I don't know, maybe it happens if your yarn isn't twisted enough. I'm not really a yarn connoisseur. You would think, as a designer, sort of seems like that's the thing to do. But I think it's actually more of a UK thing. They all seem to be yarn connoisseurs. Here in Canada, I don't know, most people I know that crochet, we just grab the cheapest yarn, Red Heart or Bernat Super Saver, whatever it happens to be on sale. My mother-in-law, she does knitting. She does know how to crochet, but she prefers knitting, I think. She has a few like nicer yarns. She knows people who hand dye. I'm not on the screen again, sorry guys. Um, anyways, she's been doing it longer. And she's learned that she likes nicer yarn, so that's fine. I think someday I'll get there. Right now, I have to use up all the millions and millions of scrap ends I have. So these little squares are handy for that. Just uses a small amount of yarn. You can pick colors that look nice together. So there was our last stitch. Now we're gonna go in that gap, and in the gap. Ta-da! Now we have this little like butterfly, hey? Okay? But it looks not too bad. If you had more, you could just keep going. If you wanted to make a outer edge, that's fine too. I don't know what you plan to do with yours. Whenever I'm about to cut, I always do a slip knot first. Then when I pull it through, pull it tight. Ta -da. Now we want to do this part too. We're just going to pick it up and fold it and do the exact same thing that we did for the others. Make a slip knot, but then find that little gap. Here's the two gap, two chain gap, two chain gap slip knot that I made, pull it through, slip knot, and then back loop, back loop, which is the loops that are two loops that are closest to each other, single crochet, back loop, back loop, single crochet, back, back, single crochet. Now I have seen, I have a hundred subscribers now, whoop whoop, it's pretty exciting, and it seems like I'm getting some watches, people are watching things. Not a whole lot of comments telling me if what I'm doing is great or not. 
I did receive one super nice little note. She said she watched my videos because she's familiar with the technique, but she wanted to know how I do mine. So she made up the little square and she really likes the way I do my patterns and my videos. They were well written and made sense. And I was like, yes, that is so great to hear because I don't know if you know this, um, I've only been doing making these patterns for two months. And I've been doing videos for one week and I've only been doing interlocking crochet, which I call locked fillet mesh because I was scared of in being like copyrighted. But as far as I know, interlocking crochet is not copyrighted. It's more of a general term for the process now. So I've only been doing that for like a year, less than a year. Crocheting in and of itself, I have been doing for a long time. I was about eight when my grandma taught me. And she taught me how to do double crochets. That's it. Chain and double crochet. She didn't even teach me how to do the slip knot. She would just do that part first and then hand it to me. And I figured out how to do the slip knot eventually on my own. And I was able to create more projects. I didn't know how to read a pattern. I made various things just sort of make it up as you go along I had a purse I showed it on Instagram the purse that I made my mom still uses it which is pretty sweet um, but I just made that up it's just double crochets in whatever shape I had wanted at the time and now here I am back to double crochet and chain even though I do know how to read a pattern now <laughs> so here's where it gets a little bit trickier we want to make sure we get the last stitch before we go into that chain gap. So here's the last stitch. Now here's my gap. One in that gap. One in this gap. It just goes right over top of the stuff that you had already worked. We've done the gaps. Now we go back to the back loops only. Single crochet in the back loop. Single crochet in the back loop. I like this technique because there's not a whole lot of stitches to learn. Beginners might get confused at reading the pattern because I know a lot of beginners, that's not the first thing you learn. You don't learn how to read the pattern first. It's just like when you're speaking language as a baby, you don't learn how to read first. You learn how to talk. You learn how to do. So people learn how to do the crocheting and then they learn how to read a pattern. And once you learn how to read a pattern, then you're able to do more things. But Here's where I think once you get past that that learning curve of like this is a different technique than I'm used to, you can make really intricate designs and it looks complicated, but it's really not that hard. It's all just double crochets and chains. That's why I think I like this technique the best. I think, well, best for now. I have other projects too that I like, but it really is something that looks way more complicated than it actually is. You get a big result from medium effort. I'm not going to say small effort because it, it is it's a little bit complicated. We're nearing the end again. And now I have to make the decision if I'm going to put a border on here or not. I'm going to look at it first. Is that my last stitch? Nope, not quite. One more. One more stitch. And then in that chain gap, chain gap, there we go. So here we go. We have joined them. Now if you wanted to do blocking, you can block your squares before the join. You can block them after. I am not a fan of blocking when it comes to afghans. Probably if I was selling in a marketplace, I've heard that blocking really is the way to go. If I'm just using it here at home, it's going to get washed, it's going to get thrown on the floor, the children are going to drag it around. Blocking is not going to make much of a difference for me. But, uh, maybe someday I'll change my mind on that too. I don't know. So, it is joined together. Now, if you wanted to, you could keep going. You would just single crochet all the way around. You'd have a nice red square. I really just don't want to on my one because I'm not sure what I'm going to use it for and I can always put this on later so I'm just going to be done with it for now. I'm going to cut that off. 
Oops, almost missed there. We go. Now, I'm also, you should weave in your little ends. I'm just going to leave them for now because I'm not sure what to do with this square. And I'm lazy. I don't want to do the weaving in right now. <laughs> but that is it. There's my little... There's my little square. It's pretty cute. I was going to measure it for you guys. This is my really fancy pencil case full of yarn stuff. When I did the square, before I put the border on it, it's about 5 inches. Adding the border, mm, it doesn't give you a whole lot extra, but it does make it a little bigger. Now that I have them joined together, because I have a border and this little tiny bit in the middle, we are closer to 11 depending on where you go. That's where blocking helps too, right? You get a more consistent measurement. And my squares are not actually square this time. You can see I have only 10 this direction, just over 10, and more like 11 for that direction. So as long as you're consistent, it doesn't matter a whole lot. That's how mine have turned out. I think it's pretty vibrant actually. I like the crispness of that. You will see this has a bit of texture. It's not flat. You'd have to use a different type of join if you wanted it to get flat. And the back side looks like this. Which is not, not horrible. To me it does look like the wrong side. But uh, it's not like an ugly wrong side. It's just, just not quite the same as the front. So please send me a message or a comment or something. Let me know what you want to see next. I want to make more videos for you guys. I am having fun creating and feeling like I'm famous. <laughs> Maybe, I don't know if I'm famous yet, but someday. Someday I'm going to be so famous and you'll be like, I watched her videos when she was just starting. I'll be like, yeah, you did. There you go.